video, I'm going to be showing you a really funny little Sylvester and Tweety nail. Sylvester has Tweety around the neck and they both have this surprised, shocked look on their faces like they were caught in the act of something naughty, which obviously they were. I love this one, it's over the top, it's cute, and there's so much animation built into their faces. It's just, I love it. I hope you guys like it and I'll see you next time. Bye. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a burnt orange type of a color of acrylic over the top of the whole thing. This color I really feel like adds to kind of the nostalgia look that these characters can sometimes have with them and it just is perfect. It really shows off the yellow of Tweety. It kind of shows off the color of his beak and feet as well. It's a brighter shade of orange and it goes very nicely with the black and white on Sylvester. So this color just in general is resoundingly my favorite color for the background of this nail. Obviously I chose to use it so it makes sense that I like it but there are the reasons why. Now I'm going to be filing the nail into shape with my e-file just to make sure that everything is all smoothed over and ready for sculpting. So now that we're ready for sculpting, I'm going to take some black acrylic and I'm going to start sculpting Sylvester. Usually, and I say usually, but this is like my past thought process when I was sculpting something 3D, I really didn't necessarily try to build up height. I was mostly focused on color and I'm trying to change that not because I dislike that technique that I had before, where I was just trying to really get the color going. I just think it's less dramatic and a little less fun and um, nail techs just wanna have fun. So we are going to try to really get some extra height on, on our Sylvester. And as you can see, that first initial shape that I sculpted for the top of his head is actually fairly thick. So then as I'm going through and I'm sculpting those little hairs that are coming out the top of his head and his ears, I can play off of that initial thickness and I can either make these thinner or thicker or however I want to do it to give the design even extra dimension especially considering Sylvester is heavily just black and white in color it's not like some characters where there's 13 different shades of color and you can really get an idea of what you're looking at based solely off of color for somebody like Sylvester a lot of the details are just in layering you know, there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily because something is a t completely different color. It's because of different heights that you can really see the detail and get an idea of what you're looking at. So after we have that first little bit of black on the top of his head, I'm going to be sculpting in his eyes, really big, really open, very shocked eyes. That is with white acrylic. The other thing when you're sculpting characters like this, you need to make sure that the products that you're using are not only pigmented because obviously if you're sculpting white on top of black, your white has got to be pigmented in order to not look gray and splotchy but you also want to make sure your products are really smooth to work with you don't want any acrylic that tends to be crumbly and that can be the fault either of your monomer or the powder so if your polymer just tends to go kind of crumbly then that's not a good one to be using especially for a character like this maybe it's fine for certain types of things some of those actually work really well the crumblier ones for say an ombre I don't know why but they just seem to you can kind of like push them out and get them to ombre nicely but for something like this they're not the thing or if your monomer if you seem if you've tried a bunch of different brands of powder or polymer and it doesn't ever seem like you can get the right consistency try different monomers you never know what is going to work best for you and there's certain combinations that just seem to work really well that i have found and it is not always within the same brand and they always teach you at least in nail school you know you have to stick within a brand that's that's just not the case i don't i don't believe that i don't believe you have to use the same that i don't know you can play around with it. That's that's my philosophy. You can just kind of, you know, see what works. I My favorite 3D sculpting combination of products that I use and I use in just about every single video you will ever see on my channel, at least recent videos, is I use Koopa Monomer and I use Double Dip Powders. They are the best acrylic powder that I have tried for 3D art and I have tried quite a few brands. Obviously, I haven't tried all of them. Every once in a while, somebody will ask me my opinion on a certain acrylic brand and I have not tried it so I can't offer an opinion um, but theirs just sculpts so beautifully so for this design just as a reference the original background color I used that burnt orange was from double dip the black is from double dip and the white acrylic I'm using now is Koopa's so you know I use a combination mostly of those two brands just because I really like both of them I also really really appreciate um, their customer service so those are all things that kind of play into it so we've got the rest of our little Sylvester face I'm going to start building up more layers. Like I said, so much of this is about layering. So you've got the back of his cheeks and you have like the front of his muzzle, his lower his lower jaw and his mouth is open below that. And like I said, it really has this like shocked, just crazed, like, oh my goodness, I got caught look on his face. So he's got that very theatrical 
um, mouth expression. I'm going to fill that in with some black with a nice bright red color. I'm going to be adding his nose right across the top of his muzzle. And then after you've got that done, you can add a little bit more black to his body. So we've got black and white, black and white, black and white going across the entire design. As you're adding those little bits to his body and anytime really you go from white and then to black, you want to make sure that you clean up any smudging that the black might get onto the white areas of your, of your acrylic work. The best way to do this is to take a brush that you get as much of that black pigment out of as you can, get it really, really clean, have some monomer in it, and then swipe it away. The funny thing is, as you're working on it, you may not even notice these smudges as you're doing it. Like I did not obviously notice that when that's there. Um, so you can always fix them later, but if you do notice them, just clean them up as you go. Now we're going to be sculpting his arm that is holding onto Tweety around the neck with our acrylic black and white on a nail form backing. I like to hold the nail next to the nail form backing or on the nail form backing for a moment as I'm getting the initial sizing down just to have a nice size reference so that you aren't making any guesswork. If you're doing this on a client or on yourself, have your client hold their finger against the nail form backing or obviously yourself. Just keep your finger there and then sculpt and it doesn't have to stay there the whole time, but at least to get that initial, how big does this need to be size reference down. So we've got our black and our white on our nail form backing. The black is the arm. Then we're going to do a thin layer for Sylvester's hand. After you have that, then you can start actually sculpting your Tweety. So when you're sculpting your Tweety, this is the same thing. You really want to be cognizant of the size of Sylvester compared to the size of Tweety. Sometimes it is so easy to just get in a zone when you're sculpting something and kind of forget how big something should be, especially if you sort of hop topics like you go from, you know, somebody's face, it's easy to kind of keep that in proportion, especially if you're looking, but then all of a sudden you start sculpting something else or painting something else and the sizes just go way off. So easy to do. So you really have to remind yourself if that especially is something that you're guilty of to keep going back and checking that. Another thing I want to mention about our Tweety is that for this design, the original reference photo that I was looking at, Tweety's head was a little bit higher up so you could see a bit of his neck above Sylvester's hand. That is something that I would recommend that if you have a design like that or like this one, if you're doing this one, I would not recommend that you do it that way because that neck is going to be so thin and so fragile that it would break so easily. So if you're doing something similar, I would recommend just kind of adjusting that particular part of it a little bit so that um, Tweety's chin is actually touching the top of Sylvester's hand so that that adds a lot more strength and a lot more stability so that you don't have to worry about that fragile little neck. We're going to be doing Tweety's legs and feet with a really nice bright orange. I'm also going to use that color to sculpt his beak when we get to that point. So I've got the two feet. Everything we're doing, just like I was mentioning with Sylvester, is really nice and thick and 3D and really has just a lot of, a lot of shape to it. I'm going to be sculpting Tweety's eyes with white acrylic. The eyes, on, not so much on Sylvester. I feel like those, especially for this style, are appropriate in 3D. For Tweety, I don't think they necessarily needed to be. They could be 3D or they could be flat. I also just want to show you guys that that is how I fixed a mistake. Did you guys just sketch that where I had an eyeball on there and I just scraped off because I didn't like the way it was positioned? I don't do that often, but anytime I do have a situation where I'm like, you know what, that just does not look right. If you're quick about it and you decide really rapidly before it's hard that you don't like something. If you take um, either like a dotting tool or a, a little exacto knife blade or even just like a tweezers or something that you have close by that is metal so that you can really scrape, you can scrape the wet acrylic right off the dry acrylic and there is very little to no residue left over and then you can just redo whatever it was that you were doing. However, if you do wait until something is completely cured, it's hard. You can't scrape it off. That just isn't an option anymore. What you have to do is you have to file it. So if it's something thin and small, a hand file is the best option because you can buff it off really quickly and really easily and you don't accidentally take off too much. Or if it's something that's a little bit bigger or more significant, then what you're going to want to do is grab an e-file with a fine grit bit. You do not want to use coarse or even medium grit for this. I would use fine or extra fine, something that is just really gentle, really soft, and is going to take things off slowly and carefully. Then you can use those to file off the 3D element that is just a little bit wrong and fix it, redo it, go back through. And hopefully with either of those options, the fix is something that can happen really quickly and fairly um, effortlessly and doesn't ruin some of the previous work that you have done or anything that you do like. 
when you're sculpting Sylvester's hand around Mr. Tweety, you have to make sure that you aren't covering up his face at all. You want to make sure that those cheeks are nice and visible. And so when you're sculpting the different fingers, kind of curve them down and around so that it's almost like a little circle that you can see on top where his head is popping out. Add the claw to the end of Sylvester's thumb, and then you can attach the arm to the body of Sylvester with some black acrylic. I'm going to add just a little bead where I'm going to place the arm, then grab the arm and hold that in place. If a little bit of the acrylic kind of goes haywire where it's not supposed to just kind of touch it up clean it up as best you can i find that attaching some of these pieces with acrylic even though i typically would use nail glue sometimes acrylic just seems like the easier option especially if you have a fast setting monomer so that you're not holding these things in place for you know several minutes it's just maybe 30 seconds to a single minute because otherwise if it goes any longer than that i personally get way too impatient to just hold it there and then just smooth everything out and then i'm going to be gluing in the whiskers which are pieces of um jacket thread or upholstery thread so a heavier duty thread into a little indents I had placed into his cheeks cover up the ends of those little bits of thread so that they really get secured into his cheek with more white acrylic hold those in place until that's really set up and then repeat on the other side so I'm dipping the threads into some nail glue so that there's just a little dab of it on the end and then holding them in place I like to use my finger to prop up the whiskers as they are setting and then there is the other side same process and then after you have them done to that stage you can add any other details you want to your face finish things off touch up anything that needs it cut the whiskers to length and then you can do the final part which is going to be adding details to our Sylvester and our Tweety with acrylic paint. Hopefully you have enough detail just painted into these characters that there isn't too much that you really have to do or sculpted into the characters that there's not too much you have to paint in with acrylic paint. And the reason I say that is because to me the more details that are sculpted in which is the easier part of this process or the the more controlled part of this process then the fewer questions there is about where things go when you go to paint in the last little bits. And for the outlines on this, I'm not going to go too crazy. Obviously, outlining black with black is useless. So for a couple different places on his face where the black I felt like needed an outline, like his eyebrows, I'm going to use uh, red paint instead. And then on the white parts of him, I'm going to use gray paint to add the outlines and the shading just to kind of start that out. And it gives it a much more subtle, a little bit less aggressive type of a look. So we have the little bits of outlining on his body on his face i'm going to do a red outline of where his iris would be on his eyes with black in the middle just like so add a couple little black outlines where they are really necessary like i said i'm not going to overdo the black outlines i'm trying to keep this a little less um i don't know a little less overdone i suppose and just try to simplify it slightly and for somebody like this particular character the simple is actually i think a better a better outcome it really kind of lends to the nostalgia of these characters i'm going to add that nice really bright white highlight on his nose some white highlights in sylvester's eyes touch up any of the lines the other thing that's nice about black when you're sculpting things with black is if you have to touch any of them up with black paint you cannot tell it is completely invisible at that point a couple little outlines on his arms with gray paint and then switching over to doing details to Tweety I'm going to outline his feet with brown so still no black and then after I have his feet outlined with the brown I'm going to move on to his face when you're doing the details on his face same thing try to keep them simplified instead of using the exact same shade of brown that I used on his feet I'm using the same paint but I am diluting it that will make it a little less uh, dark and intense of a color and so when it goes to outline the yellow it looks a little a little softer and a little just a little less and really the only places on his face that I'm outlining that with that lighter shade of brown it's going to be around the beak but just because it is against the yellow softening it slightly really just makes it blend in a little softer I'm going to outline his eyes with a diluted black at his out his eyelashes with that diluted black after you do the first lines with them if you decide that you are happy with their placement you can darken them slightly with a little bit more pigmented of a color I'm going to brighten up his actual eye with white paint. So the original bit of white acrylic I sculpted was so thin that it just wasn't quite as crisp looking as I would hope. I'm going to add some highlights to Sylvester here and there on his hand, on his face, on his body, his chest, anywhere that I feel like it needs a little bit more brightness with some of that white acrylic paint. Just kind of add to it. I'm going for kind of a pop art look with different um, lines and different, different levels to it. So we're going to be adding just a little bit more of that white highlight to give it some more of that kind of cartoon pop art type of a style. A little bit of outlines in his ears. And then after you have those, you can go back and add the blue color into Tweety's eyes. A nice bright blue contrasts so well with the yellow of his, of his feathers. 
once you have those little blue eyes in, you can add his pupil and you're basically getting right to the end of all of these details. There's not a whole lot left to do. Every time I think I'm done with a design, I like to look over the whole thing and just make sure I'm not missing anything like Tweety's eyebrows, for instance, don't want to miss those. Just take a moment, kind of have your reference photo next to you, have your eyeballs dart back and forth, reference photo, artwork, photo, artwork, photo, artwork, and just make sure there's nothing that you're missing. Once you're happy that everything is painted as it should be, go ahead and apply some gel sealer over the background of the nail. That orange color has a very slight glitter shimmer to it, which is just so pretty. So we want to make sure that that really sparkles. After that has been top coated, go ahead and cure it and then apply some matte top coat over your Sylvester and your Tweety. And this design is done. I love this one. Sylvester and Tweety is just one of those character duos that I feel is so iconic and so classic and just who can't love them. They're just the cutest thing. So I hope you guys like this one as much as I do. And don't forget to share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I love to see them. I always get such a big kick out of it when somebody shares a recreations with me. It makes my day. So don't forget to take me and I will see you all next time. Bye.